Hey everyone, it's Lisa. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to whatever days of Christmas crafts, whatever day I'm on. Uh, so in today's video, I'm going to be making a family ornament. It should be no surprise, the very, the vast majority of videos in this series are probably going to be ornaments. That's what people are making this year. Now we made this family ornament. This is using a design pack from Design Bundles, the cute crew creator. I'll tag it in the description. And we are doing this on eighth of an inch birch. This is a great project to use your scrap wood on. And so what I'm going to be showing you in Silhouette Studio is how we took the different pieces of this builder and set it together to, so we could get a seamless design. I'm also going to show you how I broke apart the design so we could get different color, different shade of an engrave for this beard. So there's a couple technical steps in this. It's not difficult, they're easy steps, and it's good to know for something like this because it really helps how it looks. But I'm really excited about this. Hopefully you enjoy it. If you're watching and you haven't subscribed, please subscribe now and ring the bell so you don't miss any more uploads. And if you're thinking about getting a Glowforge in time for the holiday season or in time to start next year, you can use the link in the description to save up to $500 on a new machine. All right, so we're gonna set this up. Um, the way that I make this ornament is I use this pack called the Cute Crew Creator. Uh, it's from Design Bundles. I'm gonna link it in the description. And so when I sell this on my website, they will see a preview image of all of the options. You can see these heads, bodies, that sort of thing. And I have fields that they literally type in person one, female, blah, 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 and each one is numbered, so they just do number, number, number. I will also link the product in my description so you can see how I set it up, or if you don't have a Glowforge yet or you don't wanna do it, hey, I will make it for you as well. So I'm gonna show you how I set this up. There's a couple steps that we're going to do for this just to make it look better. Um, it's simple, but these small steps do make a difference. So we'll start with the female. So uh, she's got really long straight hair. So this one is gonna be the best bet. I don't super love for her these cutesy little eyes. I think she's gonna look better with like just, I don't know, standard eyes, I don't know. So let's click there and I'm going to copy and then I am going to put this in my, my document. So I'm gonna pull from each one of these but I'm going to have my base document to bring it into. So let's just continue on. We have female bodies. She is pregnant, so we're gonna do this. What's funny is my friend that I'm giving this to, this is like, <laughs> this is not her style at all, so I know she's gonna be like, that doesn't look like me. But hey, we're working with, <laughs> we're working with what we have, right? So we have our cute little, this sort of thing. We're going to adjust that. All right, so we'll do male heads. So now we need to find one for her husband. Now he's got a pretty like, uh, Standard haircuts, I would say, like not not any of this. He does definitely doesn't have a ponytail. So I think for him, I'm gonna do this hair. It's not quite right. I'm, I'm giving one more look, but I think that's a that's gonna be the best representation. Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. So copy, paste. And while you're doing this, we can also close these other ones since we've already picked it. So no, I'm not gonna save the changes to that because I'm just copying and pasting and I want to use that as my base. Oh, it took me all the way to the beginning. So I'm gonna use that little arrow and then close out of that. No, and then continue this on. So I might just fast forward out of, you know, closing these for the future, but this is what I'm doing. All right, so we have our male bodies. And so now in my screen, all my tabs are in one space. So I don't have to scroll with the arrows, just so you know. Okay, so, you know, typically your customer would pick this out, but this isn't right. So this, I think, works for him. So we're going to copy that, paste it in here, and then close it. Technically, since it's copied, you can't close it before you paste it in there, but I just feel like I'm going to mess something up. So they don't have a child out of the womb yet, so we can get rid of these kids' head, kids' bodies. But they got some cute stuff, and I do like that they have a wheelchair here. Like, I, I like that they kind of included that a little bit. Okay. No baby yet. Also, note, if you do this for a customer, they do have little angel wings, so that's useful if um, there was a child or infant loss. 
All right, animals. So there's not a whole lot of choices. So what I do with this is a lot of the animals that I work with can fit in here. Um, you can put in like a special request. So I, I upcharge if someone wants a different animal. And so I've had people like I, I think last year I got some guinea pigs that I added in there. And so I just search for line art and whatever animal I'm looking for and I'll search on design bundles. And so you can get one too, but I'm going to use this one. They have a little like toy poodle. It's not a teacup, it's a toy poodle. So this is good enough. I mean, it's fine. All right, let's get out of here. And so let's see how beards look. He does have a beard, but I like don't, I don't love any of those. So he's gonna be clean shaven for this ornament. They're, they're just going to deal. And then typically he wears glasses, but not always. So I'm not going to do glasses for this as well. Uh, for something like this, you do need to just weld. And actually, uh, no, I'm gonna move on. Okay, so now we're going to assemble our little family. So one thing we wanna keep in mind is that like we need to get this head to fit on here, right? So we don't wanna do it to when they just touch because you see this line is a lot thicker. We want that line to overlap on itself so it looks the same width as everything else. So I'm gonna take this, right click, weld. Now that looks pretty good. Now we're gonna finish this off with the husband. Let's take both of these, go to my line panel up here, just center him on there, pretty good. And now I'm just going to click down. You can see it looks about even, and then weld. And actually, he does not have a beard, but I wanna show you how we do this because this step does, it's a little bit different. So let me just grab, let me un ungroup this. I almost said unclick. Okay, and then we have this guy. So I'm just going to make a copy because this is fine for Joey, but um, you know, we're gonna work through this beard. So now we're gonna take this beard and you can see that the, this has an inside part and an outside part. If we were to bring this over right now, and I'm not gonna align it perfectly, and weld it, you can see <laughs> he doesn't have a mouth anymore because what it's doing is it's welding this outside black part and the beard. So we are going to right click and ungroup. So now you can see that the little colored part of the beard is right here, and then we have this right here. So uh, what we're going to do is we wanna take this and we're going to align it on here, but we need to get rid of this smile because we already have one right here. There's a couple ways you can do that. You can um, release compound path and delete this. I think in this situation, the easiest one is going to be the eraser tool if I can get it small enough. It won't get any smaller, which is fine. So we're gonna go through and we're gonna take this, right click, release compound path. So now what this did is I'm gonna take off the fill so you can see all the lines. <laughs> that looks funny. So now all of these lines are not making one shape. They're basically a bunch of shapes stacked on top of each other. But we're gonna get this, delete that little smile. So now we've taken it out of our shape. And now we can go right back, right click, make compound path, and then let's fill it in. So now he's the smileless man. And now this is pretty simple from here. We're going to bring this down. Where's the bottom of this? Here we go. I'm happy with that. I'm just zooming out. Right click, weld. And now you can see we have our little beard behind here. And all you have to do for this now is just make sure that your line color is a different color than this engrave. So this color right here, this black is going to engrave. And what I do is for this engrave right here, I have it go at a lighter um, color. So I'll do either a lot faster or really lower power. So we're gonna set it like this. Uh, now, honestly, now that I'm thinking about it, I do like this better, so we're gonna go ahead and do this. Because, I mean, he technically has a beard, but he's not like known for his beard, but he has one. So let's go right here, and I'm going to group it, 
not make compound pass because I want that other color to be treated differently. And he looks a little bit uh, thicker because he has a line color turned on, she doesn't. If I go right here and do black, you can see there's our line color right there. So I like to put pets in between uh, the couple. So you can see right here, we have our little dog. Let's make him smaller, Trip is smaller than that. He's still smaller than that, but it'll look weird. I don't wanna make him too much smaller because the lines will be off. Okay, so we want him to be in between them, but you can see we got this mess of overlapping lines. That doesn't look cute, we need to make space. So the way that we make space in Silhouette Studio is that we create offsets. Offsets are lines that are made off of or offset from the original line. And so we will use that line made off of there to cut out our background. So it sounds complicated, but I'll show you what I mean. So I'm gonna grab both the man and the woman, right click and group. I find when you do this, it makes it easier to work with it if they're grouped together. And then I'm going to change the color of this dog just so I can see where it's positioned. So you see that the dog is technically behind the people. It needs to be up front. So let's right click and then we are going to bring to front. All right, so we have Trip right there. His name's Trip. All right, so we're gonna do our offset. Let's do offset. And you can see the default is huge. We do not need that. Let's type in a distance. So I'll start with 0.04. Enter, so you can see that's how much gap is gonna be there. We don't need that much, so I'll do 0 0.02. Enter, <laughs> looks so creepy. But you can see we have that space around there and then hit apply. Now, when you create an offset in Silhouette Studio, like immediately after you make it where I am now, the offset is what is selected right now. So we are going to keep that selected, hold shift and click on our uh, design back here. So now we have both selected right here. We need to take this offset and cut out from the back that space. So we are modifying one object by another. So we need to use the modify panel now. So right here we go to modify and then right here we go to subtract. So this is gonna take the front shape and cut a hole in the back shape pretty much like a cookie cutter. Subtract. So check it out. We have that space right there. Now, one thing to keep in mind is it looks like nothing happened. So that is an interesting thing that happens in Silhouette Studio. I'm gonna hit Control Z. So sometimes when this happens, it's because when you make an offset off of an SVG you bring in, uh, I don't know, the properties don't go over and so it doesn't actually delete it, it just breaks it apart. So the way that we fix that is we're just gonna literally fill in this offset any color. It does not matter. You can see there's my original, it's still in teal. Hit shift, hold shift, get the back people, and subtract. So there you go. Hopefully that helped with some troubleshooting. Now, one thing to keep in mind is uh, we are not like, we are not gonna have these little people. Like we, do, we don't see through dogs. So um, the way that we can set this up, so you can see we have multiple things selected. It broke apart, you know, my people. So I want to get rid of four things, but there are multiple things that need to stay. So I can, I can get rid of these without deselecting these by holding shift again. So I'm gonna hold down shift, click on this. Nope, I just selected the dog. That's the opposite of what I needed to do. Nope, I gotta zoom in. Hold down, oh wait, it's already unselected. There's no box around it. Shift, shift, shift click. Shift click, shift click. So the first thing I'm going to do before I do any, oh, now it's, you gotta be kidding me. There you go. So now the first thing I'll do is I wanna group everything selected still, control G, or you can right click. So you can see there's our people, they're all grouped together. And now I can go through, select everything in here, hold down shift to deselect what I want to keep, then delete. Oh, we got this in here. Oh, let's ungroup again. And get rid of this little nub. All right, so now we have that all set. Let's zoom out. And then I'll just control G, group this together. Let me, let me go back one more step. I wanna make him the same color because it looks weird. Blue, I mean, wow. Black, 
And then we're going to group it together now. I'm just going to make sure, I'm gonna grab all of this, hold down shift to deselect the beard. And then make all of this line color black. Group that together. So you can see I dragged that out, the beard's a different color, different line color. So yes, it feels a little bit complicated, but these little things make a big difference. It looks really good. All right, so now let's type it out. So we'll do B, their last name is Bachigalupo family. And I really like using this font called like Chameleon or however you say it. There it is. I think it looks really cute. So we're going to fill this in. And then I'm immediately going to take this, weld it, that gets rid of overlapping lines, and then group it together. So now let's center it. We're still going to resize it. So we're gonna use our align tool, go up to the top, the quick access toolbar, choose this button right here to center align it. It wasn't that far off. And then it needs to be a little bit smaller. It's a little bit wide for my liking. So I'm gonna hold down the Alt button, ALT, I'm going to click and drag so this centers it right in there. So we have the Bachicalupo family. And then we are going to type 2021 because 2020 is just not a thing anymore. Can you believe that? So I'm going to use a font called Brayden. It's a nice like, like no fuss font. Pretty classic. It's great. Oops. It's great when you don't. You just want something simple because you have like a, a script font or some sort of display font. So this doesn't overwhelm. It's a really good pairing for a lot of stuff. All right, so let's grab all of it right here. Center, pretty good. And now I'm just going to fill both of these in black to make it easier to see. And then let's make that line color black too so it'll go in the same run as those. Cool. Oh, his beard moved. When did that happen? Did you notice while I was doing it that it moved? Oh, it moved when I center aligned. Duh. Because I didn't have that selected. Well, I didn't have it grouped in. Okay. Oops. Let's do that. All right, so let's grab our entire family. Control G to group it. And now we just need to make our ornament base. So I'm going to do this on a circle. Uh, I'm gonna hold down shift while clicking and dragging. This gives me a perfect circle. Let's lock the ratio even though it doesn't matter because it's a circle. And I like to do these at 3.25, three and a quarter inch wide. So there's our base. And now I need to do the hole for my string. Hold down shift again, click and drag. I don't care about the size. And then I do this at an eighth of an inch, 0.125. And then we're going to bring it up here into our ornament. I like that distance, so let's select both of these and center it. Or, yeah, align it. So we're all set there. Now right click, we want to make this a compound path. We want to make this one object with two lines. So we're just going to do make compound path. Okay, we're almost done. So what I like to do for this is I'm going to grab both of these. And at first, I'm going to take my, my shape and center align it. So we're just going to grab both of these. And this button right here centers this. Like they center the objects on each other. So I can use the same tool I used before, the Alt button, to click and drag. And so it resizes centered. So let's go right here. And let's make it a little bit smaller. Sometimes when it looks off and you feel like the ornament is not big enough, uh, most of the time, not most of it, well, whatever portion of the time you want, sometimes it just means you need to make your design smaller so there's more border around it. So I just use my arrows to nudge it down a little bit, but I'm happy with this. So we're gonna grab our entire design. We're just going to select the ornament File, Save Selection. So this will only save what we have selected, which is our ornament here. And save it to hard drive, choose SVG, and I'll see you in Glowforge in a second. 
All right, so we have our wood in here. This is obviously a scrap piece, but that's what I like about ornaments. You can use scrap pieces. So I just hit these three dots up here. I'm going to set focus. Uh, so it's great for ornaments because we're not taking much space. So while we're doing that, let's go ahead and set our settings. So we're gonna use uncertified material and put in our thickness of 0.125. And we're gonna set the focus again, just to be safe. So now we want to do, um, I'm gonna do the beard for first, then the family, then we're going to cut. So I'm gonna grab this, drag it up. And so I programmed a lot of settings in here. So right here, I'm doing birch and I named this birch light. So I'm doing my speed at 1000 and 45 precision power with 270 lines per inch. And then we have our engrave right here. We're gonna do normal birch. So you can see this is at 50 full power and speed 500. So you can see this lighter one is going to be faster and less power. This is gonna be a little bit more power, but it's also going to be slower, which means it's going to have the power on it longer, which helps get it the, that nice dark look. You can always take this if you want and make it lighter just to be safe. But honestly, I'm pretty happy with that. And then cut. The settings that I've been using for birch so far have been speed at 160 and full power. So now we're all set to go. We need to place it though. Don't just do it. That would have been silly. All right, so we're gonna set it right here. Press print and we're good to go. So this may take a little bit longer because there's a lot of detail in it, but it's also a three inch ornament. So it may not take terribly long eight minutes, you know, whatever, that's fine. All right, so let's do that and then I'll see you with the finished product. Check that out guys. So there's our final ornament. I love how we have the different shading in here for the dark and the light. And so this, I have all the stuff linked in the description that I use for it. Now the basic steps are really helpful to know and you can use this in other projects. And I will link how I set up my orders for this as well. So hopefully this can get you some last minute orders. I love using this and if you enjoyed the design part, please subscribe so you don't miss any more uh, uploads. And also I do offer one-on-one -on -one training sessions. So if you'd like to know more about the software, how you can be more efficient with your designing, you can find the link in my description to get a training session. And if you're ready to get a Glowforge, there's also a link there too. You can save up to $500 on a new machine.